welcome to February's episode of the King Street Cinema podcast. Uh, the podcast we talk all things King Street Cinema in Ipswich, mainly focusing on one movie. That movie is often the film that is shown on the last Friday of every month, VHS Fridays. And this month we have the fantastic How the Duck, a film I grew up loving. Um, yes, it bombed on its initial release 35 or so years ago. Is it 35 years old? It's more than 35 years old now. Um, but it has become a cult classic, one I grew up watching on video and I really enjoyed it. Uh, lots of people disagree with me, but I think as many people agree, including James from King Street, who'll be chatting with me about that movie in a moment. Also, we have an interview with Alex Barrett, the co-writer of the movie January, which will be shown this month as well. And we're going to have a quick summary of some of the other movies that will be shown at the Great King Street Cinema in Ipswich. OK, let's kick things off with the chat with James. James wrote about the movie Howard the Duck. You know, he's the most exciting individual I've ever met. He isn't into the whole macho thing, but he knows who he is and what he wants. <laughs> Everyone thinks of him as a hero now. But I share his feelings, and he's touched my soul. And right now, I would give anything to run my fingers through his feathers. George Lucas presents an electrifying new comedy, Howard the Duck. More adventure than humanly possible. <laughs> James, welcome back. Hi. It's been a month. <laughs> yes, or yeah. too long. So the VHS Fridays this month is something you and I are both quite excited about. Oh, yes. 1986 should be classic. Yeah. Howard the Duck. Howard the Duck, indeed. Now, this is a film we, we've spoken about a lot, not recording over the years. Yes. Um, when did you first see it? How did you first see it? Okay. I can't remember the exact year but it was probably the early 90s, perhaps even 1990, 91, something like that. I remember seeing it in the video shop, my local video shop, all the time, um, for a good couple of years at least, and looking at it and thinking, that looks weird. That looks like a science fiction-y, because really in sci-fi, I still am really in sci-fi, but at that time, especially, like anything that was, you know, my parents would allow me to watch that was science fiction I wanted to see. And I used to look at it and go, that looks really weird. Because it's a duck and it looks all spacey. What was the cover then? Was that? Yeah, cause I remember right. one with an egg on it. That's the one, right? So I, you can't see because this is not, you know, we're in, in Radio Land. Yeah. But I'm holding up a picture and on the of Howard, and on the picture there is a little sort of logo, and that logo with his bill coming out, smoking a cigar yeah. out of the egg. That was it. That yeah. was the only thing. In black, all black, black background. Yeah. So it looked kind of, yeah, that's it. Yeah. So it looked like that. I but I remember it. Oh, so I'll post a picture yeah, with the my my memory of it though. As a kid, I'm sure it's completely wrong. Is that there were sort of like stars around it as I well think, that made it, it look think, like Star Warsy kind of. I think the look. video cover did have that. It looked like it was in space. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that's what I you know took from it as being that looks really weird, but looks all science fictiony. Yeah. But, right, so the way the video shop was set up was that even though it was a PG, right? Yeah. The way that the video shop was set up was that the uh, certificate, certificate films that were, you know, for adults would be higher up. Yeah. So that kids couldn't get the boxes. But it was always on the top. Yeah. And that really intrigued me. It said PG. You could see that it was a PG movie, so that's completely fine for me to watch. But it's on the top shelf. Yeah. And because of that reason, I didn't get it out for ages and then one day I was just like yeah we're gonna have that one we're gonna yeah. get it and I just loved it from the get-go yeah I knew nothing about how the duck as a comic the Marvel thing I knew didn't yeah. know him didn't know that at all I just thought it was just a made-up thing on the for the movie yeah and I just yeah I just instantly thought it was hilarious yeah and loved it just absolutely loved it yeah I mean I, I first saw I can't remember if I rented it I remember the cover um the first my first memory of video of it which i had in it must have been in the 90s because i had it on the same video recorded as tremors which was released in 1990 so it's probably about 92 93 mm. um but i had seen it before that 
it used to come on TV a fair bit, um, but then later on it was one of those movies that would be on at like midnight. Um, I'm sure it did get showings in the afternoon when it first came out. But like you say, it's one of those weird ones that was kind of put with the more grown-up film. Yeah, because, and you know, you can see why when you yeah. watch the movie, it has a lot of, you know, very mild but still sort of adult content to it. Yeah. Um, you know, sexual innuendo and stuff like that. Um, you know, it's not Star Wars, right? It's not Star Wars. It's not that kind of thing that's clearly based for, you yeah. know, a, an, an age range of whoever. This is not for, or, you know, for I'd little say, kids. I'd say it's aimed at teenagers. Yes, um, it's, te it's teenager I mean, I'd, more than anything else. I don't yeah. know the certificate and um, what it will be when you show it. It'll uh, probably be a 12. Because it's, it's a 12 now yeah. um, on the special edition, but that could be because of the features. Yeah. But it says... Um, it's a 12, contains bleep, strong language. There is, he's watching TV and they bleep out the F word at one point. That's right, yeah, that, um, that duck hunting yeah. thing, yeah. Yeah, moderate sex references and horror. Yeah, um, which oh, is, and there is horror, there is horror. Yeah, yeah. later on in the second half of the film. Yeah, yeah with some great special effects, which, yeah. for me, reminiscent of, say, Return of the Jedi. That sort yeah, of yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I watched it young. I, I, this is something I would not show a youngish kid. Yeah. Um, because anything adult in it, would go out totally over their heads. Yeah, absolutely. Like when I was a kid, when I saw it, like I say, I must have been eight, nine years old. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't even acknowledge it as yeah. that when I was that age. Yeah, and when, when I was that age, like <clears throat> the the it's the very eighties rock band was quite appealing to me. They had the look of the Bangles and that mm -hmm. sort of thing, which as a kid I was more into than in this country at the time. You, that was popular. But it was all like Carly <coughs> Minogue and that yeah. sort of thing, more lighthearted. They seemed the fact they're playing in a club. Yeah. yeah, that seemed kind of cool. Yeah, they've got a wire fence in yeah. front of them. They're playing in a sort of punk, you know, the kind of typical it's punk not, club yeah. of the eighties. It's not unlike the bar in Terminator. Yeah, really, yeah. Um, and that that was really like, appealing yeah. for me. I mean, I was I was kind of from a very young age. I was into rock music. Yeah. Um, but the sound of the band. This is what I want to talk to you about: the music mm. of the film. Yeah. Um, a real mix, <clears> really, because the score's done by John Berry, mm -hmm. who most well known for probably James Bond. Yeah. He's done a lot of stuff over the years. Is he still with us? I don't think he is, I, is he? Not, I don't think so. Yeah. No, but the score, it matter. starts off, the opening scene is like over the city, it's all dark. It starts off, and the music's very film noir-y, I yeah. think, and jazzy. And, yeah. and then it's mixed with this funky pop rock, yeah. almost um, print sound. Yeah, it's got a guy, um, yeah, like say funk, funky rock sort yeah. of, yeah, it's the, the Minnesota sound, the print sound, very yeah. much so, yeah. Which I think, <laughs> a lot of people say it's all over the place, but I like, the, I like this mix. Yeah. yeah. Um, Absolutely, me too. I, yeah, yeah um, and I, I think it's a great soundtrack. Yeah, I, I think it's fantastic. I've always loved it. It's not, yeah, you know, it's got elements to it that I appreciate loads. You know, as music that I would listen to at home, and whatever. But just yeah, like you say, it being very uh, eclectic, a lot of stuff going on in it. Yeah, which again, that's a thing that probably people don't like. Yeah, but the, the, the theme tune, yeah. I find really catchy. It's in my head now because I watched it. Yeah, it's edit. completely. A, a a yeah earwormy thing like you just yeah you hear it and you go oh yeah that's that's ultimately catchy you don't forget yeah. it and i've read though loads of people think it's so it's just too cheesy and people really don't like that about it and i don't know i don't think it's too cheesy yeah, it has a lot of sentimentality to it certainly mm. but it's it's there's so much worse oh yeah you yeah. know in that kind of for that kind of thing it's, it's, when it, i get it stuck in my head it's not irritating me it's no it's kind of cheers me up um, um I don't like to bash John Williams because he is a genius. But there are certain John Williams tunes that I think are just so cheesy, though they annoy me. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And this one, I think, is much not. It's <sighs> maybe people think it's a two of a rip offy kind of thing. Maybe yeah, true. Uh, but sometimes with with a movie as well, they get that little bit of music, and it's repeated throughout the film. Yeah. Whereas with Howl the Duck, it's a good solid score, and then you've mm -hmm. got it's not just the Howard theme. The band have got like three or four songs in it. They do. Um, it's solid and it's it's very of its time, but with with eighty stuff at the moment, it's for, for the last ten years, eighties retro has been kind of cool. Yeah, how the duck is something that it's still. Some people love it, like us. We're not yeah. alone. Like oh it. no, of course not. Um, but it's not quite become that cult 
film that everybody likes? It's a very odd one. I completely agree, and it has baffled me now for years. When I found out it was considered to be as bad as people consider it to be, and like comes up as like one of the worst movies on the worst movie lists. When I found that out, I don't even know how long ago it was. Maybe fifteen years ago, when I first noticed that. I was astounded, completely yeah. shocked that anyone would think. Look, it not doing incredibly well at the box office. That there are many movies that happens to Blade Runner. Yeah, exactly. But for having so much hate, uh, yeah. it just I, to this, I will never understand it. I will never understand it. I can understand how people perhaps don't think it's a great movie. Yeah, you know, like the, like a person could look at Waterworld and go, you know, it's it's big and uh, you know, whoa, but it's not very good. Whatever. I mean, I love Waterworld, yeah, but I can understand. Yeah, 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 I can yeah. understand how people could look at a movie like that and go, look, I don't particularly like it, yes. but I appreciate it for what well, it is. This is. I mean, the example I use for that is I really love. Because of who I am and what I grew up, I really love Wayne's World. Yeah. Which done well and was a hit. Now, I can see why people wouldn't like that. And even yeah. at the time, if you're not into that music and that humour, I get why people wouldn't like it. Yeah. But you can't say for that sort of comedy it's a yeah. bad no, one. it's not. It's, exactly. There's nothing wrong with it. No, it's but you can see, yeah. It's what it, it's, it does exactly what it's supposed to be doing. Yeah, and I think Howard does. I do, ex exactly. I think for what they set out to make, I think they made it exactly as as they should have. I yeah. don't think there's anything. I, I I am very but look. Maybe I have a certain amount of nostalgia for the film because I saw it when I was very young and all yeah. that. And if I saw it today for the first time, maybe I wouldn't feel so strongly about it. Probably wouldn't. But saying that, I w I like to think that if I did see it for the first time now, I could see all the moments of why this should be considered a really good movie. Yeah. Because it do I don't think it really does anything that it's supposed to be doing. And what it's clearly showing it's doing, like it's not lying to you about what it is, what kind of movie it is. It does all the all of it right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think if it was made now, it would be that little bit darker, maybe a 15 certificate. Mm. But then it would lose some of the, the fun. And I don't think it would actually be as good. I think this is... I think you're completely right. And this is a um, another reason I think that that perhaps certain people do not like it because it's probably a bit too goofy and silly and not as perhaps visceral as the comics yeah. were and still probably are if they still make Howard the Duck comics. They do, yeah, they do. So, yeah, um, it's not quite Howard of the comics. Yeah. Even though they, it does have a lot of the elements to the comics that are all there, it's sort of watered down a little bit for a broader audience, for a, you know, yeah. a larger audience. Which is fine. Most comic book films are. Yeah, I don't see the problem with that. I don't is it, uh, what people don't realise is, with comic movies, they're adaptations. Yeah. They're not, they're, I mean, if you look at the, the massive Marvel films, mm -hmm. they, they, a lot of them are a lot more different to the comics than this is. Yeah. Um, and one of DC's bigger hits, Aquaman, mm -hmm. they've changed the whole look yeah, of the absolutely, character. Absolutely, yeah. It's um, really different. So... You've got to let that slide, I think. I, I would have um, thought so. There's a few jokes in it people always... I don't want to do spoilers for this. Cause no, come no, and see no, it. no. But a few of the jokes were a little bit... I think people don't get their jokes. Mm. They don't get the humour of it. Yeah. Um, and the little things... I, I, this isn't really a spoiler. This is a, there's like duck puns all the way through. Especially all the way through. The, the opening... Yeah. Right near the beginning. I well, think it's the open scene. Yeah. Um, when you, he basically gets... This is he gets sucked from his planet and yeah. comes to Earth. Yeah. When you see the duck planet... It's just so many little goofy jokes. Yeah. Maybe this annoys people. I'm, I'm, I, from what I've read of people, you know, who people are, you yeah. know, who are very much detractors from the movie. Yeah, it is stuff like that. It's stuff like all the little silly little puns and stuff. They just hate it. Right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for that reaction, but I'm like, it's a yeah, comedy, I, yeah, I know. Uh, it's like, what what were you wanting to see from this movie? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, then yeah. We, we, We'll move on from people just like because yeah. I want to talk about what, why we like it. Yes, yes. I mean, um, we we'll start with the effects. Yeah, um, Howard. Well, let's just mention that this is a George Lucas presents film. So there is the you know industrial light and magic work. So there's yeah. a lot. There's money behind this movie, yeah. which is important that people realize this is it was not a small budget movie. No. This was not some little project. This was a big thing that. They wanted, you know, the, they clearly wanted the people to see the spectacular of it. Yes, yeah. the comedy and all the silliness is important. Yeah. But also as important is the fact that it's, you know, it's a, it's a big special effecty kind of movie. Yeah. For, for its time, it um, looks great. I will say, I don't know, I'm, I think he was pretty much done with directing by, at that point yeah. in his career. But it was Lucas who really pushed for it. It was a fan yeah. of the comics. He wanted to make it a film. He had done for years before. Yeah. And he got in um, Willard Hike to yeah. direct it, who'd 
co-written uh, American Graffiti with That's him right, and I yeah. think Temple of Doom yeah I think they were at college they were probably yeah. college together went yeah. to the same film school film school together and stuff yeah. Yeah. and by, by all accounts um, William Hyde was a little weary about doing it he didn't really get a lot of it but I think it's it's a passion project for George Lucas yes um, and Lucas I think this is the thing that really hurt when it flopped um, with him and it, I think he still stands by it and he, there's no reason why he shouldn't mm. and he was one of the many people who, who now say it's ahead of his time and that's something I'd say for it absolutely um, but apparently he said that at the time he was like yeah. years, years later people will look back at this yeah. and people could see that as perhaps a bit annoying yeah yeah thing that's to probably so people are probably <laughs> stubborn and be like, yeah. well he said that so it won't yeah. um, but also that does sound quite arrogant I it think. does that's exactly what I mean yeah, like people should... look at that and go Ugh. Yeah, yeah but I, I hate to say he was right it, it, uh, it's true I mean it, it, it still holds up I didn't see it too long ago uh, a couple of years back I saw it yeah. you know again and I still think it looks great yeah well I, I'll say I watched it a couple of years ago um, I do another podcast uh, podcast a ACM's Vault of Cult where um, I showed it to some people who hadn't seen it. Mm. Um, so if you want a spoiler podcast, yeah. look that up. And the people I showed it to loved it. Yeah. Uh, younger than me, people in their 20s, really enjoyed it. Um, and that's the last time I watched it. Mm. And I, I read up again and watched a couple of documentaries before doing this. I, I'm not watching it because I want to come and see it on the big screen. I've yeah. never seen it on the big screen. Yeah, not many it. people have, probably. Yeah. Well, I think since it has. It's been, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and this is this is perfect for for what you're doing with the VHS Fridays because people like us discovered it on video. Yeah. Um, yeah. For me, this yeah. is very of all the ones that we've done so far. This is my favourite of all those of all the films we've done, and I think it's the most true to the uh, spirit of, or at least what I think the spirit of the night is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, the, the last month's Blues Brothers as well for me. Those two. Yeah. Because. Uh, Blues Brothers has become that cult classic, which kind of I think Howard should be, yeah. but also bombed. Um, but that, that's Did. that's very few people will um, diss the Blues Brothers nowadays. Yeah. Whereas Howard, I mean, so. So, right? So at the time of recording, um, Blues Brothers hasn't played yet. Yeah. So, uh, um, but yes, I would put Blues Brothers alongside with yeah. Howard the Duck as yeah. Yeah, and <laughs> they, the, the Blues Brothers is in my top ten films ever. Um, How the Duck is definitely in my top ten comic book films, and there's a lot of comic book films. There, there. are a lot. Of um, yeah. So yeah, we, we were going to say about the effects. You started. Saying, yeah. I, uh, well, they, they are great. Yeah. They still hold up. Yes, of course, it's got that feel, you know, of yes, it's the '80s and everything, but they still look great. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, so I, I personally, though that wasn't really a selling point for me even as a kid. Yeah. In fact, that heart, that part of the film my lesser favorite part when it gets to all the very special effecty elements that come up with yeah. uh, uh, what are they called um dark lords of the universe yeah. or something characters um but even so yeah it, it's, 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 it's great it's, it's great good fun you know how could you dislike it unless you're not into that kind of thing yeah. at all and obviously yeah. howard himself yes it took six people to yeah. to do that um, the, the puppeteering um, for the face. There's a lot of movement, which uh, uh, okay. I know we're not going meant to supposed to be going back, but it's a bit hard to uh, when it has so much hate. The film um, moaning about how Howard looks. Yeah, it annoys me so much. This idea that oh, because he doesn't look real, because he doesn't <laughs> look realistic. He is a duck from another <laughs> planet. Right, you don't know what a duck from another planet may or may not look like. This idea of oh, it doesn't look realistic. What are you talking about? Doesn't look realistic. Yeah. It's a fantasy. Yeah, I thought you were going to swear that. <laughs> no, no. Um, but it also, he's evolved from a duck. Yeah, right? we evolved from apes. Yeah. He evolved from a duck. duck. It's in the film. Yeah. Um, right. But but all of this, you know, it just he does look fantastic. I yeah. think it looks brilliant. Yeah. Right. And the little walk and stuff's hilarious. Yes. Everything about Howard as a character. Yeah. is great yeah right i don't see any problem with his mannerisms that he's he's funny he's got you know he's wise cracky he's clearly a guy of you know street wise but not so much that you know you find him a little bit off-putting yeah. although some people i'm sure do <laughs> did yeah. and still do but he's not 
he's not abusive and he's not aggre he's not aggressive and he only he stands up for himself and yeah. people when he's being picked on which is a lot because people don't understand yeah. you know what he is well, we and he's it. ended up in sadly he's ended up in cleveland which is not one of the <laughs> nicest places <laughs> but to the, end up. the tagline was a new breed of hero and yes. they actually changed the name um in some countries I think even over here at one yeah. point to how the new breed of hero mm. that's meant to be not just that he's a different species yeah. is that he doesn't want to be a hero yes he's he's, he's a normal duck yeah he goes to work yes um i think later on the comedy became a detective or something didn't yeah he? but he's a, right, yeah. he's a duck who gets sucked from his his life and all he wants to do is get home that's it it's a to... story of it's et in that sense it's yeah. just a story of a an alien that just wants to go home yeah right and uh yeah he ends up uh, being involved because of how he's got to earth yeah. Um, he gets involved in a whole scenario of where he's got to save the planet. Yeah. Right? So, and, there um, you go. That's, that's, that's done the effect. Let's talk about the cast. Yes. Let's talk about the cast, and we'll try not to get angry, right? Okay, I'm, 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 doing, <laughs> I know, I'm trying really hard. Yeah. Just not, it's about all the people that, you know, just have a problem with this. Because, again, I think the cast is great. It works perfectly well for what it is. But, yes, again moaning and groaning about the casting and the way people acted in this film yeah. but uh firstly um, it's just uh, i don't know his name the, the, the voice of how that is done by a voice actor yes um, oh uh, i did know it yeah, and i've got yeah. Of, I, yeah um but he's great um, yes. i know robin williams auditioned for it although mm -hmm. he was in the tour and i think it's good they didn't go for a name yeah because it with the what happened to him might have actually affected people's careers yeah um, but also it's remembered for being this film it's not remembered for this big actor isn't it yeah um yeah but, I mean, all the people the names that are in it that um are famous now they weren't at the time they were just starting out yeah and it didn't i don't think in the long run it affected anyone's career no, not um well, well leah thompson's leah the main thompson, star yeah and apparently at the time it did and she struggled to get work after and blah 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 blah, blah. um but um this was released the year after Back to the Future. Yep. Um, it wasn't the only flop she'd been in. She was in that a film called Casual Sex, I think, and a few others that didn't okay. do very... I think she was in Casual Sex. That was a film that really bombed. Um, and then, you know, three years after this, she's in Back to the Future 2. Yeah. She's been and in three. hits. Uh, yeah. Some kind of wonderful was a hit. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I don't think it affected her career. I don't think so either. I mean, for me personally, not one of the strongest actors any in general. Yeah. But absolutely perfect for this role yeah plays it wonderfully the character is also great because she's tough yeah right and she's another one another character sticking up for themselves tough you know but also a, a sweet side to her cares about howard yeah you know yeah likable likable yeah exactly but not just not just how a lot of uh female characters were portrayed at that time just sort of either silly or a nuisance or nothing you know yeah or, or trying to be too sort of but yeah and, exactly know. that's the other end yeah right where yeah. it's just tough yeah you know it's no just, this was quite i thought quite rounded quite nicely rounded yeah character. and i think i think her performance is great yeah perfect um for it. and yeah this this and back to the future is what she's remembered for now yeah um and i think she's fine i can't i, I i've seen this from a lot of these i can't see anybody else in that role now yeah um jeffrey jones as the villain yeah um this movie certainly didn't correct, um, affect his career. His career's gone a bit downhill yeah. since for different reasons. Um, but this was before... It was the same year as... Um, uh, mm. Ferris Bueller. Mm. Which... Um, which is very well known. Probably, probably most well known. And it was before uh, Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice, which two a couple film. of years later. Yeah. Um, and he, he was in quite a few things before. Yeah. Um, but really, this was... I'm not sure exactly when, but it, being the same year as Ferris Bueller, um, the, the, this would have been made around the same time. Yeah. So it wasn't like he'd made Ferris Bueller, which was big, and then they put him in this. Yeah. So really, this this might have actually helped elevate him. He's the main villain in it, mm. um, ish. Because the way the yeah, character. sure, yeah. Um, his he, his I, body is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think he's great in it. Yeah and quite he's fantastic funny and then also really menacing yes when i was a child um he did scare me yeah i think yeah. i think yeah yeah and it's i think he's really good it's yeah. a, this is it's top class performance yeah you know, you know the, the voice is brilliant yeah yeah it, uh, 
It's great. Yeah, yeah. I, I think he's, yeah, I completely agree with everything you just said. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, and Tim Robbins. Now, Tim Robbins gets yeah. heavily criticised for this. He does. Nerdy, silly, slapsticky. Yeah. I'd also, I really like it. I, I really love it. I, I really think he's brilliant. I think he's, again, I was, the thing I was going to mention about, uh, just going back to Jeffrey Jones and then we'll go to Tim Robbins. He had a blast to play in the role. Yeah. Like, he really went for it. He knew exactly what it was and what you were supposed to do. It's silly. It's silly. Yeah. Over the top. And, and that's exactly what Tim Robbins does, and I yeah, think he does it perfectly. Brilliantly. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I love the little interactions between him and Howard, because yeah. Howard doesn't like him. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Not one bit. <laughs> and he just, he just he calls him like hairless ape and this sort of thing, and it's funny. It's yeah. funny, and there's, there's chemistry between yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. Um, really good. Uh, I like joking, saying it's um, Tim Robbins' best film, because obviously he's in Shawshank. <laughs> uh, I love yeah, Shawshank right, for me. I know you're this, this, is, this is better than Shawshank. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but it, it shows what a good actor Tim Robbins is. Um, released the same year as another big hit he was in. Do you know? Um, oh, oh, come on, I do know, but it's not. Oh, where is it going? Say it. Top Gun. Top Gun. Yes. Top yeah, Gun. I know. I know yeah. he plays the part in Top Gun. Yeah. I always forget that. Yeah, I kind of do. Um, yeah. So for him, oh, he's had a mixed career. I, yeah. I would say this is no, one very much so. One of the highlights. Yeah, um, yeah, well, indeed. But he is, uh, he's the Oscar winner, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, Oscar yeah. winner Tim Robbins. <laughs> um, and did this one loads of those, like, Raspberry Awards? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. They, can, they can do one, yeah. because it's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, but Brilliant. also, not, not long after, I mean, I think probably, and I like the film, uh, it's not as good as How's a Duck, in my opinion, but I think um, Eric the Viking probably affected his career more. Yeah, um, again, uh, that's not, I think that's funny. I think it does. It gets a more stick than it deserves, but and it's not as good as Howard the no. Duck, but it's still funny. Yeah. But he was the prominent one on yeah, the cover. Yeah, he's, he's the star of the of the film. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Um. It's, that that's a film I, I'd like to talk about at some point. But yeah. I, also with that, I don't think that movie is quite up to standards to show for VHS Fridays. Mm, no, I it's agree. not. It's not that. You know, um, that would be something that if there was a, I don't know, like a. Um, cult movie season or day, you know, like yeah. the other weekenders, um, and not one I particularly it, think I'd get more from seeing on the big screen. Yeah, whereas I yeah, not so much. I mean, I, it's it's Python, really, isn't yeah. it? It's Python movie. Um, you could perhaps do a a season of Python movies that aren't uh, under the banner of Monty uh, Python. Jabberwocky, maybe. yeah, stuff. Jabberwocky, that one. Yeah. And, but um, I mean, but I, I think, services. Oh, well, he one the one the. Uh, one of the Pythons directed that, which I, I actually think, think I think it's really good. It Personal, pers yeah, uh, yeah, no, who directed it was uh, Terry Jones. Oh, Terry Jones, Terry yeah, who done um, Eric Viking. Yeah. Um, so I, I think this really shows Tim Robbins' comedy talent. Yeah. Um, other than that, that, that's basically the cast. I mean, you've got the band and you've got a few yeah. minor characters. Um, yeah, there's there's some there's some people uh, which names are completely I'm completely forgetting now, but faces that you'll recognise from other '80s movies yeah. for oh, certain. One of the henchman guys from yeah. Super Mario Bros. Yeah, Super Mario Bros. Also in Ferris Bueller, who takes the car and does the yeah, drive. He does. Yeah. He's in it. I always think it's weird. I used to remember his name all the time. He was a stand-up, wasn't he? Um, originally. Uh, maybe, but he was also a drummer, okay. and he was the original drummer of Sonic Youth. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Did not know that. Uh, maybe he wasn't a stand-up. Maybe it's the other guy from Mario Brothers was a stand-up. The other? No, because the other no, one. The, the other was... one's Fisher. Isn't yeah, he? yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> from from Short Circuit. Uh, yeah. Uh, which... yeah. I'd like to see that on the big screen. Yeah, that's that's definitely I, I think could definitely be a VHS yeah. Friday film. Yeah. So yeah, so we, we, we've. We've spoken about. We don't really need to talk about the comics much, you know. Um, no, but, I mean, uh, yeah, I don't. You know, it's it's a nice side bit to think about, but I don't yeah. think it's important, really. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, and it's just one of those that I just. This is with the Blues Brothers, which will have been for some people. This yes, is yeah, 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 we'll, um, yeah. I've been yeah. mentioning it to people, and I'm like, you've got to see this on the big screen. But yeah. for me, more so with How the Duck, yeah, because it's one of those. I, I know at least two people who it is their favourite film. Really? Generally so. Fantastic. And, and these, these two people better come. Yeah, um, that, yes. If um, you're listening, you better come. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I want to get reactions from people afterwards. If I always forget to take order along. Mm. Um, I'm not going to sit there and play the recorder. You know no, I mean? yes, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Pipe, pipe room. But it, it's just interesting. And it's I, I generally think it's the perfect film for it. But I also think it's quite brave of you to show it. Sure. Um, um, and we've been thinking about showing it since we come up with the idea. Yeah. 
So it's not like something we just. Uh, the reason why, because right. So I wasn't sure if I wanted to mention this or not, but I think I just will <laughs> um, anyway. Um, so I'm to start by saying we had been thinking about this now for showing this film for at least six months, probably a bit more. But King, um, oh sorry, no Prince Charles, even theatre yeah. oh, in, they show, in yeah. Soho, they're showing it. Yeah. Uh, now I think oh, okay. around around now at some yeah. point um, um, before we are anyway, yeah. um, but that that hasn't that's not why we're showing it. Well, we spoke about it. It was more mm. than six months ago because when you started doing them, yeah, and we were chatting. Yeah, it's one of the the um, movies that both us two and Dan mentioned. Yeah, sure. I've, um, well, I've been wanting to put it on yeah. at any chance I've had, yeah. and this is the perfect one. And so yeah, when this idea of doing some sort of you know cult films from the VHS era, that was like, yeah, it was like my first thing in my head was yeah. Howard the Duck, you know, for me personally, what I'd want to see. So, yeah. yeah. So, so get yourselves down there. Definitely. <laughs> Please. Uh, bring do. your tails with your, your tail <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, anything else you want to add about the film? I mean, I've, it's uh, just, it's, it's well paced as well. It is a film yeah. kind of a two halves. I mean, we do talk, well, completely, and yeah. it's sort of right in the center of the, of the film. Like, if you, uh, uh, sort of, you know, if you're a bit nerdy and are interested in sort of t the timing and pacing of films, it is pretty much bang on the, the middle of the film, the running time, yeah. that the film does take a turn. Yeah. Right? So it is almost like, yeah, a tale of two hearts. Yeah. Ha. <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah. Um, I personally prefer the first path just uh, as as a sto as a story and the way it's told yeah. i i prefer it but it's still great like the second mm -hmm. half is still great it it's insane it's yeah. <laughs> it goes into absolute wacky territories yeah. um and if you like stuff like that then it's perfect like yeah. it's just i just can't see uh yeah a better i can't think of in fact for what the type of film it is a better film i, yeah. I can't i'll just say if you're a fan of Special effects. Special effects. Comedy. Comedy. Star Wars. Star Wars. Comic book Marvel. Yeah. 80s nostalgia. 80s nostalgia. All over. And I'm 80s at, music. 80s music. Uh, comedy noir. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Indeed. Yes. <laughs> Any of those things. Just go see uh, it. Yeah, how could you not? How yeah. could you not see it? And it's got a duck in it. I mean, come on. It's a kind of ducks, yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's, yeah. it's a good duck. It is a, good, it's a very good, good, good duck. duck. And good duck. I still think it looks great. And yeah. if you find it creepy, grow up. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> seriously. What is your problem? Yeah. Just, yeah, go with yourself. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> okay. um, all right, now I'm going to um, yeah. we'll take a little break. We've done an interview with one of the screenwriters of a film you're showing at the beginning of the month, uh, January. Uh, caught up with the screenwriter, uh, Alex uh, Barrett. Yes. I always say R in the middle of the name. I'm like, what is your surname? I don't know he is. Alex Barrett wrote this film with the director. Yes. And I caught up with him over Zoom and just to have a little chat about it. And this yeah. is a film I'm very much looking forward to yeah, seeing. Me too. Totally different to how the time. Yeah. <laughs> um, but here we go. This is the chat I had with Alex. <laughs> Alex, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. That's, that's great. Um, how are things? I mean, the, the the film it was made a year or so ago, yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And um, it's it's had a few, a few showings, but is it getting a nationwide release in February or is it the end of January? Uh, very end of January, yeah, twenty seventh of January. Okay, so this podcast will be out just after that, but it's coming to Ipswich a week or so later. Um, exactly. So yeah. It's uh, so yeah, it's kind of launching on the twenty seventh, but then there will be some screenings, uh, sort of straggling into February, including uh, the Ipswich one. Yeah, excellent. So, do you want to tell us um, how you got involved in the project? Because you're the co screenwriter, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, I think a lot of people find it a bit strange to be honest, because it's yeah, it's a Bulgarian language uh, product uh, project, and so I think a, a lot of people are like, you know, how did this British writer get involved in this weird little Bulgarian film? But uh, it sort of makes a, a bit more sense when you unpack it. But um, the, the kind of the reason why I got involved initially was I had a another screenplay, something that's, that hasn't yet got made. Um, and that got selected for an international development scheme called IAVE, which is a sort of uh, pan-European development scheme, uh, really aimed at producers, actually. And so the producers come on this scheme and they get kind of development advice on their project, um, but also kind of, uh, you know, they're tutored and 
um, have sessions on on how to actually get the, the projects into production as well. Um, so it's a kind of producer based scheme. And I was there with a, a UK based producer with our project. And Vanya, who produced January, was there with, with January. And they were at a very early stage of production, uh, or not even production, sorry, but a very early stage of development. They just had a, a kind of a, you know, an outline of a few pages. And they were looking for a writer to kind of come on board and help them actually turn that into a screenplay, turn it into a film. Um, and they they wanted someone to, to work with Andre, uh, the director, who was also my co-writer on it. Um, and kind of help him shape his ideas, shape the material and kind of bring it to life on the page. Um, and I really liked their project and they really liked the script that I had written that um, I was on the scheme with. So it sort of made sense for us to, to team up. I think they did talk to some other people as well, but they eventually hired me. And I think um, what Andre and Vanya were, were really looking for, the, the film itself is um, it, it's a kind of a mystery thriller. But it also owes a lot to um, to kind of absurdist theatre, uh, like uh, Samuel Beckett uh, and Pinter. And I think that they were kind of looking for someone that almost uh, sort of came from the tradition and understood that kind of theatre, uh, which is, you know, a bit more based over here than in, than in Eastern Europe. And so by kind of working with someone from, from Britain, they were able to kind of have the legacy of that kind of theatre uh, within the screenplay. Uh, and it also meant that they could open it out a bit. Um, you know, obviously not very many people speak Bulgaria. And if you have something that's kind of too um, confined within that region, then you make something that maybe doesn't travel as well. So I, I think that, you know, they had involved in the production generally. They had other um, people. The, the cinematographer was Portuguese. So they kind of brought in a, a few other people, I think, to also kind of help uh, make it a, a bit more open and a bit... Um, you know, give it a slightly wider uh, interpretation rather than just um, keeping it confined to, to Bulgaria. That's excellent. Yeah, um, uh, I, I don't know if you know Ipswich well, but um, it's sort of a small town uh, Suffolk. Uh, well, how would you, what would you say to get people, you know, to bums on seats to get them to come and see this film? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, it's it's a kind of, uh, it's, a, it's essentially a mystery thriller. Yeah. Um, but it's something something a little bit different. It's you know it's Bulgarian language. It's black and white. Obviously, that um, kind of situates it within the realm of art house cinema, I guess. Um, but it has uh, we always kind of call it a horror foreplay, and it has sort of elements of horror, um, and it has kind of references to uh, sort of ghosts and spirits. And it's um, it's what kind of drew us to the material was that it. Um, it was a perfect mix of kind of genre and this kind of absurdist theatre that I was talking about with Beckett. Yeah. And so there's a lot of kind of um, elements of genre in there. There are elements of mystery, there are elements of horror, mystery, uh, elements of thriller, also elements of Western. We spoke quite a lot about Westerns and Andre always wanted it to kind of feel like a, a Western. Um, so I hope that people can just kind of come along and enjoy getting kind of sucked into this mystery. It's not a film that uh, offers easy answers. So it's not... Um, you know, it's something that requires a bit of thinking behind it, but hopefully people can kind of come along and get sucked in and just kind of enjoy the, the journey that that we take people on. Yeah, I mean, watching the trailer, I mean, I've not seen it. I'm going to go and see it uh, as soon as it's on. Uh, it did get a kind of a, a Western vibe and horror. It's the two genres that I really like. And um, at the moment, sort of mainstream cinema, you don't, especially Western, you don't get that that much. And I think at the moment, if you're looking for an alternative to the big blockbusters, because it's basically the big cinemas are all about avatar at the moment um yeah you, this might be the film uh to, to give a go i think and um how, how have um sort of screenings and stuff gone so far what's the feedback been yeah it's been really good so far um i think that you know obviously it's been been playing in kind of eastern europe and stuff and i think that um people over there they they obviously get sort of extra layers to it that um are perhaps a bit kind of harder for for people from our side of the world to appreciate in terms of kind of what it's saying about post-socialist life and life behind the Iron Curtain. Um, but I think for us, it, it it has that kind of existential, um, deep kind of seated horror. And uh, although it's not really a horror, I don't want to sell the, the horror thing too much because I think, you know, you do that and then people come along and they're like, oh, it wasn't, yeah. uh, wasn't a slasher, you know. Yeah. Uh, but it kind of has elements of all of that. Um, and uh yeah hopefully kind of people can just enjoy it you know hopefully 
Um, but the the uh, the Western thing is also quite interesting because um, coming from kind of Eastern Europe, we also looked at Easterns as well as Westerns. So I mean, we were we were referencing a lot of Westerns and talking a lot about like um, you know Sergio Leone and, and and all of that. But there were also kind of references to you know Kurosawa, all those samurai films that are basically Westerns and were yeah. remade as Westerns. And then also things like uh, White Son of the Desert which is a sort of a, a Russian Western. And so you get all these kind of uh, other influences, which I, I think are really interesting as well. That's great. Yeah. Uh, okay. So the, the film showing from Friday the 3rd of February, um, there's a show in a day up until uh, Thursday the 9th. I recommend people come and see that. Just, just while we have you, have you got anything else in the pipeline that you can talk about? Any other projects on the way? Yeah. I mean, everything is kind of at, at really early stages and you just never really know what, what's actually going to uh, go next. So I've got a couple of projects that I'm looking for a producer for that are kind of in very early stages. Got another project that's sort of casting, but can't really um, go into too many details because you just never know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just kind of, you know, looking around, doing working on various projects, but nothing that is um, sort of far enough along to, to talk about really, unfortunately. Okay, yeah, I totally understand. Well, hopefully we'll, we'll be able to get you back to talk about one of them projects uh, uh, another time um Brilliant. and uh king street's really really gets behind uh you know independent cinema um and uh it's, i'm just pleased that that it's showing because uh i've known you for quite a few years and i've seen you you post about it but sort of it was a while ago now it's last year i think you put some posts up about the film yeah then, i mean it's just... it's it's been like obviously covid has had kind of a massive um like impact on, on getting stuff out but um what, what's interesting for me is that as you know i think andy you know i direct as well um yeah and normally when you direct, you're really involved in a, a project all through production and all through post-production and everything. But with this, you know, I was a writer. So my job was actually done quite a few years ago. And it's been kind yeah. of um, quite interesting to then sort of see it um, roll forward, having kind of essentially finished my work on it, what, like five years ago now. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's been an interesting process from that point of view as well. Excellent. Uh, was it difficult to watch then? Being a director yourself, would you have, were you constantly watching it how you do things differently or were you just pleased that somebody else got you know done that job instead of you if that makes sense that's a good question I mean I, I know that it was definitely um a difficult production because they they didn't have much time they didn't have much money and they were they were literally shooting in the the mountains in Bulgaria uh you know one of the incredible things about the film um I think that hopefully you know people will agree when they see it is the location they shot in this old um, socialist hotel, literally in the in the middle of the mountains in Bulgaria. Uh, so I was quite glad, quite glad to to uh, dodge the logistics of um, of that. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's really interesting. I mean, it's definitely like um, you know, even throughout the whole script stage and, and throughout production, we were certainly following Andre's vision. You know, it was uh, it, he he kind of it was weird. It's one of those things where, like, you know, when we started the script, he spat so many ideas at me. And I had to like take all these ideas and try and give them shape and form and um, turn them into something. But within that huge mash of ideas, it was also clear that he kind of knew what he wanted. Yeah, um, yeah. And, you know, we were right. We were writing in English. Um, I should say I don't talk Bulgarian. Um, and actually, you know, for obviously like international co-productions trying to get finance, you need a script in English anyway. So we were, we were writing in English. But the final draft was done in Bulgarian by Andre. And so I knew that there were things that would change um, from a, a cultural point of view or a, or an artistic point of view as well as we kind of got closer to production. And then, then there were things that that changed on set. Um, Andre comes from a, a documentary background. He's very much a, a, a documentary guy. He's been very, very successful with several documentaries. They've kind of shown at all the big film festivals, won lots of awards. And this is his first fiction film. And so we also kind of knew all, all through the process that there were going to be things that were kind of left up to just chance on set. Um, like there's a moment where someone was supposed to break something on set and it didn't break. And they actually just decided that it worked better not breaking. Um, so, and then that kind of became part of the story and kind of moved forward. So there were, there were, it, there were certainly changes that kind of uh, surprised me but that was good to be able to kind of see it as a viewer. And yeah, there are things that, that maybe I would do differently, but um, overall, like I was so happy with, with what Andre had achieved and his vision and how he was able to take that forward. Um, I was just, I was very excited to be part of it and uh, very kind of happy to, to see the end result on the screen. 
That's brilliant. Okay, thanks a lot for giving us your time, Alex, and uh, good luck with the film. And um, Thank you hopefully so much. we'll we'll be hearing from you again very soon. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks, Cheers. mate. Cheers. Okay, I'm back with James. Hi, <laughs> you all right? I'm fine. So January is that a movie you're looking forward to? Oh, very much so. Yeah. yeah, that looks great, doesn't it? Yeah. Visually, yeah. that looks fantastic. I mean, I can't, I don't really know much about it, even from reading the synopsis of the film. I, I very li- It gives very little away. Yeah, the, the trailer looks really atmospheric. It all complete atmosphere. Yeah. Uh, so. vi- visually, um, very interesting, intriguing, and a little scary. Yeah. But, yeah. So, um, the, that's January, which is shown in February. Shown in February. Yeah, uh, it's a bit confusing. Um, <laughs> it's not. It's, it's, no, of course not. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, if we actually, if we showed it in January, that would have been a little nicer. But February's fine. And it's um, early on, if I'm right in remembering. Yeah, in, right early on, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. in the month. Yeah. So, right. you know... It, get get down the cinema in yeah. February to see January. Yeah. Uh, what else in February are you looking oh, forward to? Oh, what am I looking for? I tell you, we, we've got quite a lot of movies yeah. coming up in February. I think sixteen, which might be Ooh. might be a record for us, um, or up there at least. So I'm not sure how we're going to fit all of them in. Ennis Men is still playing in uh, February, so uh, right at the beginning of the month, like on the second and third, I think. So that's the the Cornish movie yeah, yeah. by Mark. I Jenkins, think we touched on last month, which we did talk all about last month. Yeah. yeah. So you know, there's that. Um, oh, big ones. Let's just say Tar looks uh, like yeah. a big one. Um, I think a, a director is uh, Todd Field, who's more of a he is a director, obviously. I think he done this might be his second or third film, but acting did a lot of acting generally sort of supporting roles the only film that i definitely know i remember him in is twister but okay. um but small part well, just yeah. one of the crew like you know you've seen twister yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. so one of the crew members you know okay, they yeah. go chasing the tornado twister 2 is it officially in the works by the way oh brilliant fantastic <laughs> that's just what we need yeah. anyway so tar <laughs> yeah uh, uh starring kate blanchett playing composer conductor so oscar remus. oscar big yeah sort of uh, it's going to be another one of those big performances where she goes and shows everyone how good she is and everyone yeah. looks at her and goes yeah you're really good yeah so look forward to that i think psychological yeah. drama so maybe a bit kind of you know hopefully uh, interesting yeah. Yeah. character it, it study really character study i first saw the trailer um yeah when i was at last week the trailer's was, really cool isn't uh, it i think it's a really yeah, cool looking I hadn't, trailer i hadn't, didn't know much about it yeah so I, I saw it before last time i was at king street it was on yeah and uh yeah it looks really good i think i i'm sure it's going to have lots of classical music in it being that she is a conductor yeah. and uh so you know if you like classical music as well yeah. that would be a selling point yeah i'm i'm really looking forward to it um because i think she's she's good isn't she yeah she is yeah yeah, yeah. So yeah, definitely yeah. Uh, come out for that one. Another big one we got uh, the, the Fablemans, Spielberg. which is the new Spielberg movie. Which again, Oscars, I think, I'm pretty sure will be, you know, probably in every category or the majority yeah. of the categories. Um, I don't know if you've seen the trailer or not. Yeah, I've seen yeah. the trailer a few a few times now. It um, it looks nice. You know, it's probably going to be his last movie. I'm just saying, I have no idea. But just from the feel of it and his age now, being that he's yeah. probably in his late 70s, I would have thought by yeah. now. Last film as a director. As a director, it? yes. Yeah. Where he's, you know, f- fully in command of the film. Um, well, I'll say that. Even the ones that he produces, he's probably fully in command. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. Um, yeah, you know, uh, uh, a bit semi-autobiographical, I think. Yeah. yeah about yeah. a kid growing up wanting to make movies at the time yeah. that probably he was a kid so in the 50s yeah so you know so yeah if you like those kind of movies nostalgic kind of mo- spielberg movies then yeah. uh, definitely come along for that one and and spielberg to my knowledge it's the first film he's made about cinema isn't it oh, probably you know so yeah, yeah about so. the love of cinema yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. certainly um yeah because he's mainly you know g- genre man you know likes yeah. making genre films yeah, so B B movies, but with but bigger. Yeah, yeah, which and, is and nice. You know, it, to be honest, he's one of, if not the most iconic mainstream. He's the director. he's the iconic yeah uh, mainstream filmmaker, Hollywood filmmaker of uh, yeah. of his generation, without doubt. Yeah, you know, so, so yeah, big, one for the definitely one, that definitely one, for one to for the big screen. Don't miss it. Yeah, very quickly. What's your favourite Spielberg movie? Um, Jaws. Okay. Yeah. 
<laughs> every day of the week okay. this jaws okay yes it's definitely in my opinion it's definitely his best good, best good. work and uh yeah everyone in it's great and it's got a shark in it it eats people and quite like that it's cool so, yeah, it's cool yeah. yeah uh speaking of sharks um the whale <laughs> 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 What a lead in. I know. Yeah. It's a wrong species yeah. and everything. Yeah. So, yes, a whale is a mammal, not a fish, which is also brought up in Jaws 2. So, <laughs> yeah, so uh, Darren Fraser. Aronofsky's uh, latest movie starring Brendan Fraser. Again, be up for Oscars. Uh, Brendan Fraser possibly going to be a winner, maybe. Yeah. Uh, in that one, this is going to be his, uh, his, I'm sure, defining role of his career. A big comeback role. He's, yes, he's, uh, sort of. He's done TV and sort of slow yeah. comeback. Um, made yeah. this. You're a big movie. fan. I like Brendan Fraser. Yeah. I mean, um, I'm like, I'm not saying he's the world's best actor, yeah. um, but he's been in some very likable films. Mm. Uh, what's your favourite Brendan Fraser film? Here we go. Um, that what's that Treasure one? Treasure. No, one. sorry, Pyramids, where he goes to Egypt and stuff. The Mummy. The Mummy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's probably my favourite Brendan okay. Fraser film. The first, uh, the first one. I didn't like the others. Uh, I was so tempted to just, when you said that. It's California Man, California, California Man, man. Uh, or Encino Man. Encino, yeah. Uh, if you're uh, if you're an American, very very likable actor, I'd say. Yes, um, lovely, in uh, fact. And it's also, uh, it made made the news that he know. was meant to be the villain in the Batgirl movie. Um, but oh, then okay. the, the whole film, they yes. filmed it and it got scrapped. It's that, um, it's that still, film that we'll never get to see. Yeah, I reckon we will. But yeah. yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, this is he won a Critics' Choice Award. There we go. It? So he's already getting awards for it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've seen the trailer. Um, his performance looks like yeah, that's that's a that's an award-winning performance. Clearly, yeah. they're, they're selling it as like that. You know, yeah. it's marketed that way. Um, but reviews, are, it's not just about the performance. But reviews that it is a good film. Yeah, it's a, it's yeah. a play um, based on a play. Uh, the, I think the writer of the film is also the yeah the writer of the play also wrote the screenplay for the film, I believe. Um, and from yeah, where you can tell, see it's a chamber piece. Very few actors are going to be in it. I think it's probably no more than four, four or five people. So yeah, very much a talky movie. Yeah. Sit around talky, emotional. Yeah, if you like that sort of thing yeah you know uh, go he, go yeah. go go see it um i'm just uh, yeah i would like to mention um our monthly music night yeah for the next month will be because we had the lovely the wonderful um last waltz i made it to that I, you did yeah, and it was, it was outstanding it is amazing, it's yeah. the one the greatest uh if not the greatest concert film ever made uh, so difficult impact, impossible to top that. So what we've gone with is because it's, I think, a 50th anniversary of What Stacks, which is, uh, again, a concert film set in L.A., I think, in 72, where Stax Records, it's, uh, yeah, soul and funk musicians playing yeah at a not an arena a, a stadium in la i can't remember i think it's called something like memorial i think it's memorial stadium huge stadium loads of stuff gets played it's very famous it's got some great i've seen it it's got great some fantastic performances with people like isaac hayes and rufus thomas so if people like you know funk and soul music boah, brilliant just fantastic You've got to go see it it's also got richard pryor in it yes as uh said talking about uh telling jokes but also being very serious as well and there's a lot of swearing and a lot of uh, racial slurs in it. So it is an 18, the film. Uh, but yes, uh, brilliant. If you, you know, like, uh, if you like, if you like music from the 70s, funk and soul, and you like prior, you gotta see this freaking movie. It's yeah. just fan, fantastic. So yeah, well recommended. Awesome. Yeah. Shall we? Also, uh, shall we talk about the double bill? Yeah. This is yep. this is one I'm looking forward to. Yeah. Um, Aliens and Terminator 2. Yeah. Two, I think, two of the, the best sequels... Uh, the, yeah, two of the best sequels ever made, really. I was thinking about how should I put this, because best sci-fi sequels... No, just best sequels. I, yeah. I, I really enjoyed both of them. They are, they are both, for me personally, they're both solid, uh, like you say, sequels, but yeah, solid sci-fi. You know, yeah. action sci-fi. You know, you can't really go wrong if that's what you want. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was talking to someone this morning before we recorded this who's a massive fan of Alien, yeah. not a huge fan of Aliens. Mm -hmm. um, I I look at them as different 
yeah. films in the same it is a sequel but it isn't there's a reason it's not called alien 2 yeah. not just because there's more than one alien in it yeah. it's a different genre the yeah, alien is uh, a yeah. horror film in space mm -hmm. aliens is an action film in space absolutely yeah and I, I like that i like that it's not just a rehash because it's so easy if you look at um halloween 2 just a rehash of the first one yeah um and in this it's same character as in scrawny weavers um same universe but completely different throws it on his head so to speak yeah and i think it's remembered for that it's yeah. remembered for being something different whereas terminator 2 is kind of the a bigger budget Terminator. first one but there's so much more in it they've, they've twisted the characters mm -hmm. Um, completely yeah it's a, a film probably an hour longer than the first one yeah I would say, that, I would say it so, doesn't yeah. feel it and it, it opens up for more um, yeah so two sequels done differently both the same director we should add yes there's James Cameron um then if you want to talk a little bit about Cameron yeah I mean I'm I for ages I was a bit stubborn and thought I didn't like it right <laughs> um and then I forget that he done Terminator um he done you, you i do know it's, it's all it's good T titanic was huge avatar was huge yeah um I, I have to be honest i didn't watch avatar i missed it at the cinema mm. i didn't watch the first one until about a year ago and i liked it yeah. i'll say it's um i think a lot of people hate on it for, for the, just because it's a big budget film which i was probably one of these <laughs> not so much about this film but about other films that have been like that about it. yeah um yes the story's been done before but so what yeah um and I, I, I thought it was, it was good. Yeah, I, I, all the things you say, I can't disagree with. Uh, I pers for me personally, I'm not a huge fan of his films just because I'm not a, a huge fan of those types of movies yeah. in general. Um, I don't think there's enough humour in his films. I think he takes himself far too seriously as a filmmaker considering he just, for me personally, or no one should take themselves too seriously, but considering he makes... You know, like you say, films big that are movies. big B movies that have stories that have been told before. Yeah. Um, yeah. What? Well, why? Why are yeah. you being like that about it? I, I don't. Mean, I don't get it. Well, I, ju I just find that he's probably a person I wouldn't want to know. Yeah. You know, as, yeah, but, as a as, on a personal level. But, but, um, but these two. But movies. I do completely appreciate he works extremely hard. Yeah. He's revolutionised um, parts of the industry completely. So if you're into progress in that in that sense of the technology that's used to make films and stuff like that, and wanting to make you know films look more real than real and all of that kind of stuff, yeah. he's responsible for that. With Lucas, he's responsible. Yeah. You said about, about humour. That's one reason I'm not massive on Christopher Nolan. Yeah. Um, but these two movies, I'd say, are the most humour in James Cameron movies. Um, apart from maybe Piranha 2. Yeah, right. He came on that last minute. But yeah, I mean, but look, he did True Lies, which is funny. Oh, yeah, yeah, I I, True Lies is, f I think that's probably his most underrated film as a film. I know you, know, you say it did well because it's an Arnie film yeah. and it was always going to do well with the box office and stuff. But it is underrated. No one ever talks about True Lies no. and they should when they talk yeah. about Cameron because I do think it's probably his best film overall. Um, or at least my most enjoyable yeah. of, of his films. I will say, though, just talking about these two, as a child, because that's who I think they're aimed at, <laughs> um, I saw both of these films when I was well well under the age of the certification, right? Yeah. So I saw probably Alien when I was about eight or nine, again, similar time for around Howard the Duck. Yeah. Um, and I saw Terminator 2, I, I know, in fact, when I saw Terminator 2 for the first time, I was 11, uh, 10, no, 11 years old, um, just turned 11. Uh because uh, it was the last day of primary school. In yeah. fact. <laughs> Do we watch it? We watch it at school. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. So these were two movies that, I, and you know, these are two movies that I really liked when I was that age. Yeah. And the older I've got, the less I've liked them. Yeah. Which, if you want to talk about Alien and Aliens, uh, which I do prefer Alien a lot, I've continually really liked it. Alien as a film, overall yeah. as a movie. I think I've appreciated it more over yeah. time. Because as a kid, I was waiting for like the action. Yeah, the, 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 there's not much. Yeah, yeah, but it's the build up and it's yeah. tense. And, yeah. Um, now I always, I always loved that, even when I was little. I mean, I watched Alien um, a few about three or four years after I watched Aliens, um, and yeah, that just scared the hell out of me. Even yeah. then, I think I was yeah, I was twelve when I saw Alien, and yeah. I was just like, this yeah. is scary, scary stuff. Um, so yeah, I preferred that one, but like I say they always have big nostalgia 
thing for me. His yeah. movies, you know, do the the ones that I saw as a kid. You know, so Terminator, Terminator Two, Aliens. The Abyss, which again is another one, doesn't get talked anywhere near as much as it should do because that's a lo that's a lovely film. That's one I haven't seen. I've yeah. bought it. I'm mm. going to watch it. Um, I think that's a, a lovely film in the sense that that if we remove or the plot element to it and think about the dynamics of the char the characters because it's about people that are working together in a very difficult situation. Right? They work deep underwater. Right? Yeah. You have to be serious, you have to know what you're doing, and you have to be close with the people you work with. Cameron knows this, and not only does he know it, he loves all that stuff. He loves underwater stuff like that. He's absolutely fascinated by it. It's yeah. a big, big passion of his. And you can see that in the film. And that's why I think it's one of his better ones, because yeah. you can see the passion. You can see that, that he understands this um this way of life people that actually work in these kind of situations in reality that comes across very clearly for me and i think in a way the film is hampered a little bit with the plot yeah. because it's just again it's just a yeah. uh, those bits those you, sort you, of action -y, b movie bits kind of take away i think from some of the the wonderfulness that's in there in there that's uh, to do with really what you know deep sea people that work in in yeah. in deep sea uh, I, I, sea I also yeah. think he's fascinated by the challenge of filming yeah water. in I mean, yeah. if you look at I me mean, yeah. yes completely i'm not massive on uh, the film titanic but i really respect yeah he done sure um it's still one of the highest grossing films ever. yeah of course um yeah understandably and, so and what i like about that movie is the effects because they're subtle Mm -hmm. well, a lot of them are not yeah. all of it and it's, it looks great yeah even today it still looks great i remember seeing it when it came out it was fantastic the the, the you know the bit when the the titanic's hit yeah. and it's going down and things and, and all this all the special effects the detail is incredible it's yeah. incredible detail so yeah, yeah. but um yeah, that's this double bill. what i'm looking forward to and i'm gonna i'm gonna come to this mm. is it's the perfect saturday night popcorn oh, absolutely so completely back, back um should be fun yeah i haven't seen aliens on the big screen i think i might have seen terminator at some terminator 2 in right. Asia at some point yeah. but either way well we've shown um, at the cinema at kingston we've shown aliens we showed aliens last year um i remember you showing alien no we showed aliens oh, as I well yeah, okay, yeah, yeah 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 um I, like back to back pretty much i think okay, like, yeah, week so after each other um so we've done that and I, I think that did fairly well you know uh this this time it, w it wasn't it was on the other screen so the smaller screen of our two screens this will not this will be on, yeah. on the big one um and terminator 2's for me personally has always been i think a bit of a people do get excited about that film um that's certainly one that i think people would like to see more yeah at, at it, the big screen and it, the, the effects yeah. were revolutionary at the time and still look really good yeah uh, the money that was spent was incredible. They blew up a building. They built a building to blow it up, which is yeah. quite Im impressive. Cool. <laughs> yeah. uh, and also, what I, one thing I, I, I use, this used to annoy me about the film, but I love it now. Every time they turn on a TV, a radio, anything, Guns N' Roses are playing. Yeah, yeah. And that's cool. Yeah. In my opinion, uh, my humble opinion. Your humble opinion. <laughs> which is correct. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, but uh, that, that's, that's, a, that's a fun blockbustery. Yeah. But I think they're kind of the right blockbusters because you, you don't show many of the, the bigger films. Um, unless no. Unless they're... But these are, these are fondly remembered. Yeah. And the fact they're revolutionary, I think... Oh, they're, they're, certainly, a, they're certainly important. Um, they're part of a, uh, a part of the history of filmmaking um that's important you know yeah. Holly, it's part of hollywood i think is you know certainly something that shouldn't be forgotten um and there is in my opinion and i would like to think more so uh, yeah for rounded uh, good rounded cinema fans to have a more broader sense of cinema yeah and not to just be oh i only like you know hollywood movies or oh i only like international foreign you know yeah. small films or whatever the, to have more of a broader understanding of the importance and appreciation of film making from all over the world yeah. hollywood included it's important yeah you know so yeah uh, and one last connection of these two films from mm. my memory two not just james cameron two action movies that were made for adults mm. where they made action figures of 
yeah. sell to kids. Yeah. Which is something I love about the late 80s. <laughs> Robocop action figures. Yeah, and, and Terminator. Yeah, yeah. but I, I'd like to, yeah, it's important to recognise, I think kids, because kids aren't stupid, right? I remember when Terminator 2 came out very well, and you could see that it was clearly marketed for children. Yeah. Or, you, you yeah, know. Yeah, there was, there was, there was uh, often they bring out, like, <laughs> For more adult horror films and action films, the McFarlane type action figures. Mm. With Terminator 2, they were definitely made, made for kids. They do special things like melt, yeah. and yeah. They, they were made to be played with, with. not to yeah, be yeah, played with. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, 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 and you had all the computer games and everything yeah. that were, you know. And it's the last, until the more recent one, which Cameron's back producing, everything Terminator in between has been 12 certificate. Yeah. So it's been aimed at kids, you know. Yes. Um, um, but, you know, obviously. Because uh, it's double being eighteen, so don't come if you're not over eighteen. Um, but we, the people who did come, well, don't come if you won't get in. Right. But um, <laughs> true, mo most <laughs> people who come along who've seen it before would have watched it when they were younger. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. both I of these movies. I, yeah. um, Aliens, I first saw on TV, so I didn't break the rule. Me too. <laughs> Whereas turned out too, my mate had a video of it. Oui. Yeah. Yeah, we, um, we watched it, like I say, at school yeah. on video. <laughs> yeah. Well, 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 <laughs> a kid, another friend of mine brought it in. He had, right, so what came out well, here? In a lesson, in a class. Right, so it's the, last, it's the last day of school. Oh, right. There are no lessons. It's yeah. just kids having fun. You do what you, you know, yeah. pretty much you do what you like as long as it's legal. Uh, yeah. Then we did something illegal, uh, which yeah. was to watch Terminator 2. Um, and the the, uh, the teacher was, like, fine with it. Just thought, oh, really, you guys want to watch that? Yeah. Oh, fine. Well, that, the, at our school, yeah. the, the same thing primary school last day we watched wayne's world because i brought yeah. it in all right uh, the teacher walked off and done whatever yeah and there's one scene uh, that, we've kept this fairly pg so i'm not going to swear yeah the s word is said quite a bit in one scene yeah. and it was that bit yeah. the teacher walked the teacher in on decided to come back and in, she yeah. looked over at me and went oh raised her eyes <laughs> i was like yeah right what well, what come out around that time was uh so this is 93 by the way this is 93 so this is a couple of years after yeah. terminator 2 has come out and um, what come out was a tin box with both it. both of the films on vhs and the kid it was a friend i can't remember i'm not quite sure which kid it was it might have been a really good friend of mine because i'm pretty sure he had that box as well so it might have been him but they brought it in and we didn't know it was coming in you know yeah. and it was just like a surprise we were, oh my god but so the teacher allowed us to watch the second one, but I don't think they they said you can't put the first the one. The first one was an eighteen. Was then it's now a fifteen. Yeah, but yeah, uh -huh. so the second one was a fifteen. So it yeah, was, really. you know, okay, yeah, we're, we're eleven years old, but everyone knows. Everyone knows kids of that age are watching. You know, ten and up. Yeah. Kids are generally watching things like RoboCop and Ter of that, of that oh, time, yeah. RoboCop, Terminator, stuff like that. All, yeah. all the action films of Arnie, and they're all getting watched. It's, it's, it's not much different to a few years ago when it was TV, but um, Game of Thrones, really violent, but there was kids watching that, yeah. mainly. Yeah, of course. Um, so yeah. it's why the world. Kids kids want to watch these things. It's part yeah. of growing up. Yeah. You know, um, there's an era in my life when I was like 13 where the film's things would come out like Matilda and Stuart Little and this sort of thing I wasn't interested in them at all I watched them in my adult life and quite enjoyed them yeah. I hadn't watched Babe till recently for that reason <laughs> really that's what I'd say yeah. I love that um, yeah and it was like at the time I was like Meh, I, I know you said this see I was not like that I was very much like I liked watching anything I could watch pretty much yeah, certain kids films but certain, I think it was if people I'm, I'm like this thing, so people go on about it too much it puts me off mm. oh, of course, and with yeah. kids films things were meant for me I'm like yeah whatever I'm, yeah I know I'm meant to work like that but, um, <laughs> but then other kids films would come along I'd enjoy them mm. um, uh, but if they were going on about stuff for more adult like when Tarantino first came out yeah I really want to see it. Yeah, sure, me too, and I did. Yeah, and I, 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 was that in school? <laughs> no, no. Um, I remember talking about that. I remember telling people that I had seen Pulp Fiction, um, and I was again like young, twelve, maybe near twelve, nearly thirteen, yeah. um, and people being like, "Really, like, really, you seen that?" Like, yeah. you know, like a bit weirded out by it. And to be perfectly honest, looking back at it now, understandably, because I really shouldn't have seen it. Yeah, because I, I remember it having a, a quite a negative effect on me, actually. Um, yeah, so <laughs> yeah, I, well, I remember uh, someone bought it, or their brother did, and lent it to me, and I watched it like pitch black in my room, just sat there and watched it. Um, I really liked it, but a lot of it, yeah. probably I didn't understand. No, it, I didn't. Under yeah. I didn't understand it, and, but in a negative way, not understanding, ah, like it having some sort of, you know, 
effect on me like having some kind of oh i don't quite understand what's going on but it's making me feel really uncomfortable you know yeah, what i mean uneasy, yeah, yeah, yeah that kind of thing so yeah, yeah. there we go and on that high point yeah uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, well, yeah, okay. talking right. through, right. Sorry, yeah, well, I, knew, I, I was I worried that that might happen with the whole uh, James Cameron thing. Well, okay, so Babylon, another big movie coming out uh, for February. Um, that one, again, Oscar, going to yeah. be a big Oscar movie. Um, it's about Hollywood in the 20s, at uh, the time of the changing over from silent films to talkies, I think. But it's really, from the trailer, you get more of a sense that it's really just about the insanity yeah, of, of living in it, Hollywood. It's the director of La La Land. Yeah, La La Land, who's already won Oscars, so yeah. maybe not this on this occasion. The film is long, so if you're not into long movies, I could completely appreciate why you might not want to come. But please do. But it's... Um, it's been out in America a while. Mm. Response, I mean, I think it had a really big budget. Yes. Um, it's not taken the box office by storm, but the reviews have been pretty positive. I've yeah. seen some really great reviews for yeah, it. Yeah. Um, it's one that I'll have to say I'm looking forward to, but it's kind of been thrown in my face everywhere. For oh, the last yeah. Few months. It's the, the advertising for it, the trailering for it has just been crazy. Yeah. It's been so much. So, um, yeah. but I, I am going to go and see it. Yeah. Um, the well. cast is good. Most mostly, um, he's got, yeah, uh, and and yeah. I, I think that from the trailer, Toby Maguire's the one to watch in this, yeah, because he just looks insane. Yeah, cool. yeah, he does. Um, and nice to see him back because it's been a while, really. Yeah, I think he, he was in that Spider Man, wasn't he? Yeah, um, I can't recently. remember, yeah, the the, the latest the one, one yeah. in it, but so nice yeah, to see him so doing think, something else, yeah, exactly. I <laughs> think that might be the springboard for him. He's back yeah. in that, and then, yeah. oh, I remember him, <laughs> yeah. I remember him in films, yeah. yeah, yeah, he's all right, isn't he? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so we got a, I'd just like to touch briefly on, um, so our more international films, we have, um, Acaris, which is a little Spanish movie, family Spanish movie. So if you like movies about family dramas, come to see that one. Uh, no Bears, which is an Iranian film uh, love story uh, by a, a filmmaker who, uh, Iranian filmmaker Jafar Panahi, who's a very, very famous Iranian filmmaker. So that one should be wonderful. I'm really looking forward to that one as well. And as I, I mentioned, EO, which is a film about a donkey. Um, if you know uh, the director, uh, Robert Resson, I think it's kind of, who was around many, many decades ago. He made a film about a donkey as well, and I think it's kind of a homage to that. Okay, that looks so, really cool. The yeah. Flat. Looks great. Yeah, so there's that one. And Holy Spider, which is a Danish movie, crime, thrillery type film. Uh, that looks kind of fun. Um, I think it's based on a true story of a, uh, a female killer. So, ooh, oh. scary, scary stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it, yeah. I think. Oh, oh, a documentary we have, uh, All the Beauty and the Bloodshed, which uh, I think is going to be quite heavy going. Yeah, um, that's an 18. That's an 18. Uh, it's, about, uh, it's about the story of, I forget, it's really bad. This is where I should have done my homework. Um, about a uh, photographer who, a very famous photographer, um, she did many uh, work with uh, LGBT uh, people and worked with uh, AIDS patients and things, and so it's a very heavy kind of you know, yeah. photography. Uh, but this is about her being her involvement in bringing down a pharmaceutical company, a pharmaceutical company who was um, giving out um, oxycotton, which has been a big killer in America, killed a lot of people. A uh, prescription drug. Um, this is ba basically heroin, yeah. really. Um, and so, yeah, her involvement in bringing down this company, and I think that's that's what the film is it's, about. I've never heard of it, and the trailer showed yeah. last time I went, and I'm like, I've got to see that. Yeah, it just looks. Yeah, cool. it looks like it's going to be real, real powerful stuff. Yeah. So yeah, looking forward to that one. If you like documentaries about serious things, yeah, that will be uh, one for you. Yeah, not a double bill with how the duck. No, definitely <laughs> not how <Howard> the duck <laughs> double bill. No. So yeah. yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, one thing mm. I will add, and I should say this on the podcast, is do keep checking the website because sometimes things come up. That's right, yes. You know, so, um, and, yeah. you, and that's what I do is, I mean, you're really good with, you, you get the flyers out, which you can pick up around town. Yeah. Um, uh, but sometimes there are like, uh, you, it's like, you know, you, you get this film and you put it on. And yeah, we do. Like um, keep, keep we are quite into um, being a bit spontaneous, shall yeah. we say, of having just some ideas that have always been floating around, but not quite sure if we're going to do it or not, and then decide that we will. Yeah. So, yeah, that's something that happens fairly that's often. Great. Um, mm. 
there's an alarm going off. There it? is, yeah. yeah. Which is the we're well, probably out of time alarm. <laughs> yeah. So um, <laughs> then that might not have picked up. So people yeah. will be like, "What, yeah, made what up? are you talking uh, about?" Yeah. But thank you very much. I've really <laughs> enjoyed this. We've um, we've chatted lots, but yeah. lots of different films and How the Dark. Yeah. Um, don't, don't miss it seriously yeah. five star movie and uh no, no we, we we used to do that what's next month but we, we, we were recording this one a bit earlier yeah because i want to get this out a little bit before the beginning of february because of the interview about the film what comes out at the beginning of january yes which you've already heard so um keep updated on on the websites and everything yeah uh king street cinema type that in and um Look forward to whatever we talk about next time. I, I, I like these these VHS Fridays. They're like yeah, they're good. They're good. Um, <laughs> and we, st we start the next episode. We got, with, well, with, the, I don't like this film. Yeah. It's, oh no, uh, no, no. The next the next one, which is almost a cert, is 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 great. Okay, well, so uh, be, uh, very. You'll be very much looking forward to that one when when it comes along. Awesome. Thank you very much for joining us again. Big thanks to Alex for the interview earlier, and um, yeah, we'll be back very soon. Goodbye. <laughs>